Shalom, this week's Sedger of Sedger's Mikates. Shaming someone publicly is considered such a heinous sin, our sages compared it to killing someone. One early scholar took the comparison literally, saying that many of the laws that apply to murder would apply to embarrassing someone in public. Human dignity is priced by the Torah at a premium, and even preventing your own public shaming is considered valuable. This week's Torah portion sheds light on one aspect of public shaming, public confession. As the brothers are negotiating their release from Egypt, Yosef tells them, you must bring me your youngest brother, that your words may be verified and that you may not die. And they did accordingly. When they saw how hard it was to go free, the brothers said to one another, we are being punished on account of our brother because we looked on at his anguish, yet paid no heed as he pleaded with us. This is why these challenges have come upon us. Then Reuben spoke up and said to them, did I not tell you? Do not wrong to the boy, but you paid no heed. Now comes the reckoning for his blood. Hashem plays narrator in the next verse and wrote, they did not know that Yosef understood their language, for there was an interpreter between him and them. In his commentary to this episode, Rashi wrote, the brothers did not know that Yosef understood their language, and they talked about their guilt in Yosef's presence. When the brothers had spoken to Yosef, there was always an interpreter between them who knew both the Hebrew and the Egyptian languages. He interpreted their words to Yosef and Yosef's words to them. Consequently, the brothers and the Egyptians were under the impression that Yosef did not understand the Hebrew language. The brothers' confidence in not being understood is strange given our sages' teachings do not say something that cannot be heard because in the end, it will be heard. Quoting the famous axiom that the walls have ears, Rabbeinu Yonah explained that everything eventually comes out, and even one's best friends can reveal a secret told in confidence. Be careful, he warns, of what is possible. The brothers should have been more careful about speaking openly in front of others. The brothers were too smart to be too, so careless. I'd suggest it was an underlying psychological need for them to talk openly about their sin towards Yosef so many decades in the past. Public confession of a sin towards others is Jewish value. The, Ram, the Rambam wrote, it is praiseworthy for the repenter to confess publicly and make his sins known to others. He should reveal the sins he committed against his fellow to others, saying to them, I have sinned to so-and-so. I did such and such to him, and behold, today I have repented and regretted. This applies to sins between a man and his fellow. But sins between man and God, one does not need to publicize. In fact, it's chutzpah brazenness if he publicizes, publicizes them. Publicly confessing sins committed against others rehabilitates the relationship between the sinner and those around them. When we offend others, we cause an interruption in our relationship with other people. A public confession is a demonstration of repentance and recognition of the offense we created. The need to rehabilitate relationships with those we offended is such a strong psychological need, we push ourselves to do so even when we aren't aware, we're con confessing an offense. That's how we best understand the brother's carelessness. And it's a strong lesson for us. Shabbat Shalom and Chanukah Sameach.